Okay, then um, thanks for joining. Um, I'm Patrick. I'm a senior researcher at the GEM Research Center for AI here in Darmstadt. And um, in the talk today, I will talk about challenges and um, challenges of generative AI, but also ways to mitigate these challenges. And I will do that based on text-to-image models. Um, and I will present you here our research, um, which is conducted here at the university, uh, with members from Hessian AI, um, members from the German Research Center for AI, and Aleph Alpha. Uh, I will start with a brief overview of um, risks of generative AI, but especially of image generative AI, um, then um, in general discuss mitigation strategies, and then go more into technical details on how our methods work um, on instructing text-to-image models. And we'll um, present two, two use cases. Um, the first one is suppressing inappropriate content. And the second one is increasing fairness. Um, OK, I think it's fair if I don't go like uh, introduce generative AI. Um, I guess most of you already used models like ChatGPT or DALI for either generating images or text. Um, what we see in the most recent, maybe two years, three years, is that this um, content generated by these models is super realistic. It's hard to distingu distingu distinguish it between um, human-generated text um, or images and um, AI-generated content. So we also we already find it in many applications. Like if you want to generate or get a um, stock photo for your website, for your presentation. You can just use AI to generate creative um, content. This is also um, already integrated in um, web search engines, and you already fired, uh, find it heavily integrated in social media, like TikTok. But um, in society, we already discussed the negative implications. And maybe you already know this one. Um, um, this image displays the strikes in the US, the Hollywood strikes, where um, people are afraid that they will lose their jobs because of AI. And this brings us already to the challenges we are facing. So what changed in the recent years? As I mentioned, the content is not distinguishable between human-generated and um, AI-generated content. Um, so it's super easy to generate a lot of high-quality misinformation in the current days. And um, this leads us also to harmful misuse of the systems. But this is nothing new. I mean, um, deepfakes, for example, to generate pornographic content have been around for several years already. Um, in this talk, I don't want to focus on this intended uh, misuse. I would rather focus on um, challenges we are facing in case of um, unattended behavior. For example, um, here you see um, an article about the Lensa app, um, which is an image editing app, which um, undressed or tended to undress female users, um, especially if they look Asian. And these biases are well known. Um, so it's not only restricted to nudity, um, but we also have like a lot of biases regarding fairness. Um, here I just used uh, one popular um, text-to-image model to generate with almost the same prompt, um, two different uh, or multiple different images. Um, here I just switched the continent from European to uh, African. So why is this happening? Uh, one main reason is the data sets we use to train these models. And these issues are well known and not restricted to recent generative AI models. You can also see, observe the same um, issues if you just use a classifier. Um, still, I want to cite a research paper, a recent research paper, just two years old. Um, feeding AI systems on the world's beauty, ugliness, and cruelty, but expecting it to reflect only the beauty of the fantasy. So this is well known that we, that if we train on these data sets, this model will reflect the underlying biases. Still, um, now to cite a more recent uh, re research article, um, just like a few weeks old, 
and you find similar research articles, older research articles, stating the same. Um, this one is from Meta, from developers or researchers from Meta, um, creating their most recent language model. They state um, there's no additional filtering applied on the data sets used, um, even the, if the issues are known, um, to allow the model to be more widely usable across tasks. Further, they state, of course, um, as a result, these models should undergo significant safety tuning before deployment. But this safety tuning can be costly. And maybe the Lenser apps, uh, app developers were not aware of this. Anyway, they, they decided to use the, um, the text-to-image model stable diffusion. And um, this is a trend on line 5B, on a large-scale publicly available data set. Um, and in the research paper of line 5B, the potential risks are already reported. Um, actually, we already provide annotations in this research paper, so these annotations were created by me um, while writing this paper um, to like, give the users a feeling what is contained in the data set, That's also, that it also contains inappropriate content. So we provide references to these images, we, were, we provide descriptions, not a, no, not only about nudity, uh, content that displays nudity, but also like violence, hate, harmful content, pornographic content, and so on. Um, still, the creators of Stable Diffusion um, decided to use the complete dataset, maybe because of the same reasons as um, the meta developers stated, that they want to have like a model which is apl applicable uh, in a wide range of applications. But since, um, because of that, we are facing these issues we saw. And next, I will show you how we can efficiently avoid these issues. So one step we can do is filtering data. As I just explained, maybe this is not the way we should go, um, but it could actually also help. Um, however, it's quite expensive. We have to annotate the data, and we need to create models for different applications and train it on different data. Um, what we can also do is, like, after training these models, after deploying these models, um, check um, the user input and the model, model's output. Um, if, for example, a new is generated and then just um, display, so for example, stable diffusion displays a black image if new is generated. However, um, that's not as easy. Um, inappropriate content um, can depend on the context. If we, for example, just ban specific user inputs, specific words, this may also restrict um, appropriate content, as we see here. So another way we can avoid the risks is fine-tuning the model. Again, this could be expensive. We have to define beforehand what is inappropriate, um, and that's why we actually um, go for another approach. Um, we don't change the pre-trained model, we just influence um, the inference process. And uh, with that, we also ask the question if we can use the model's knowledge about, um, to cite the research paper, the world's ugliness, to actually suppress the world's ugliness in its generation. So as I said, we have two use cases. The first one is the inappropriate generation. Um, um, for example, nudity, but also violence, harm, and so on. And with the same method, we can also increase fairness, as we showed in another research paper. So we have these two use cases. On the left side, we want to create more diversity. So the top, top row is um, generated by the default model, and the lower um, row is showing images um, generated by our approach, um, guiding the model to generate more safe, more fair images. So on the one hand, we want to increase diversity. On the other hand, we want to suppress um, specific content and concepts. Um, so now in the next part of the talk, I will go more into details and show you how these diffusion models work. So the, the default setup is we have a text. We want to generate an image. And in the diffusion process, we want to align the image to the text. Most image generative models currently use diffusion. Um, you can separate, uh, separate diffusion models into three parts. The first part is the um, text encoder. Usually here you use a pre-trained model, like a language model. 
and so it's separately trained. Um, then um, the third part, um, the last part of this uh, model is the image decoder where the task is to generate a high resolution image. Um, the most interesting part here for us at least is the diffusion process where um, stepwise you, um, you um, use the information encoded in the text to create the image. So you start uh, with the text and just a random noisy image. And your final image, X should be aligned to the text. In each step, you actually don't predict an image. You predict the noise you have to remove from this initial noise in each step. And so the image is more aligned to the text. And you actually see that this, um, with a stepwise approach, you kind of see the image evolving. And at the end, you just upsample the image. So to go even deeper in this, to this process, um, while predicting the noise, you actually don't predict just one noisy image or noise you want to remove them from, the, from the noisy image. Um, you predict two. One is conditioned on the text, and one is unconditioned. Then you get these two points. And what you now do is compute the difference between both, so the vector. And then you apply a simple um, trick to put more weight um, on the text condition. Um, um, so you c align the image more to your text. And then you arrive at the final output. And now I show you how we can use these instructions um, to also instruct, guide the model on what is fair, what is um, inappropriate, what is appropriate. And for this, as I said, uh, we may make use of the knowledge of the model what, on what is ugly. And for that, we actually need the model to be aware um, of these concepts and be basically um, okay, so the model needs to understand these concepts, and with our guidance, we make the model aware that these concepts are bad. So we in, um, introduce a, a second condition, um, and this is actually our definition of what is inappropriate. And the user can define that, um, the developer can define um, what is inappropriate in their context. So we actually simulate how the image would look in the next step if we want to, it to be, like, push it to be more inappropriate. And then we compared, like, this is the red dot here, and then we compared to the text conditioning, um, the conditioning on the original text. And then we check if it's close, like, if we guide it towards inappropriate content, and if we just apply the um, text guidance, um, do the result in a similar image? If yes, then we just move in the opposite direction. Then we do the same scaling, but arrive at a different output. And in practice, you actually see if you choose the right hyperparameters, you only apply minimal changes. So you don't see much is changing um, compared to the original um, generated image. We just apply the minimal changes to remove or suppress inappropriate content. In this case, uh, we prompted the model to generate or not generate um, illegal activities and nudity. But you can also do both at the same time. So let's get back to our use case, um, the Lenser app. Um, in our research paper, we also investigated what happens if we prompt the model to generate um, female um, people from different countries. And that's what you see on the left side here. Um, and we con can confirm the results if you, for example, use um, Japanese in your prompt, Japanese women, for example, then the images uh, will be likely, um, at least with stable diffusion, uh, likely show nudity. Um, on the right side, you see that uh, our, the result, if we apply our safety guidance to suppress um, inappropriate content, and you can see that this guidance actually arrives at the same low probability for each country. And now, instead of just suppressing content concepts, we can also enforce concepts with the same method. We just switch the sign, right? 
And so, for example, if we can define fairness, which is really hard, um, but if we can do that for our context, we can also enforce and suppress these concepts. For example, if we want to generate um, the images we show, uh, I showed you at the beginning um, of a photo of a firefighter, which if you use stable diffusion, DALI, mid-journey, any, mostly any diffusion model, it will tend to generate male, white, person. If we identified that, we can like, create a lookup table with this information and our desired distribution. Let's say we want to have like, a distribution of 50% female appearing pe um, person and 50% um, male appearing person. Then we can check if the user is currently generating, for example, a firefighter or another image that we have in our database, and we can apply the um, desired guidance. We can suppress, for example, the concept male and um, enforce the concept female. Yeah, so we see that actu there's actually uh, value in also training our models on the world's ugliness, and we can actually guide these models as long as they, ha they have this understanding of, um, of these concepts and we can define what is inappropriate, um, what fair distributions we want to have. However, I want to highlight this, that um, this approach also has its limitations. For example, if the model, the language model or the diffusion model doesn't have a good understanding of, of specific concepts, you also can't guide them. So especially if you are working in like high risk scenarios, you want to apply all. You want like, it can be we discovered that there are also like strong correlations we can't um, avoid. Um, so we actually need data filtering um, to be 100% sure you need to check the output of the model. Um, if filtering the data is too costly, you can apply fine tuning and you, of course, can also apply our method. That's it. Thanks. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, one question about how likely is it that such an approach actually gets implemented because I think what is appropriate and not appropriate might be very different in different contexts. Mm -hmm. So I think there is, it will be quite a lot of effort, right, for every use case to define these things and put them into the models. Uh, that's true, but you already see that, for example, OpenAI with DALI is applying such, um, maybe not our method, but other methods. Um, also, mid-journey, I showed an example that mid-journey at some point um, prevented um, the input of specific words. Um, so, actually, you see that, I, th I think we also will see in the future regulations that they, that they will, like, for example, the EU IAI Act, um, like regulating um, specific um, um, products. And um, I think you can already see that companies are going in this direction. But you're right, it depends on the, on the, on the context, yeah. So thank you very much for your talk you are given today.